Hi and welcome to this tutorial. In the last few set of tutorials, we've seen some of the basics of Spring Framework and we've seen what are the features that uh, the Spring Framework has when it comes to injecting beans into your uh, classes, injecting dependencies into your classes. But in this tutorial, let's, uh, let's go back to the first tutorial which started off the series. We were talking about dependency injection with an example of a shape interface and then uh, two different shapes, a triangle and a circle. Notice what we have do what we are doing here. We have a drawing application that is dependent on this triangle object. I have a triangle class here and my drawing application, this class, is dependent on the triangle class and I'm using the get bean of spring in order to inject this dependency in order to get the dependency instead of having a new to instantiate the triangle. Now this is fine, this works fine, but uh, in order to utilize the true power of dependency injection, in order to make it more extensible in the future, we need to do what's popularly called as coding to interfaces. Uh, what this means is instead of having an instance of the bean itself directly what you do is you have an interface and then you use the interface and not the bean inside this class. And of course the advantage is that the drawing application class does not have to know whether it's uh, calling a draw method of the triangle or any other shape, it just works on the interface. So that's the concept of coding to interfaces. We'll implement that in this tutorial. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create an interface called shape create a new interface, I'll call this shape and uh, I'll define a simple method here, public void draw. Now this is a method that all my shape objects have to implement. So I'll save this. Now I have a triangle shape here. I will say this implements shape okay and of course it already has a draw method so we're good there now the advantage is now let's say I have another uh, shape object let me let me create a circle object here call this circle and this implements shape And now I have to add the draw method here. Okay, I will say, okay, let me just create a point object here. Okay, and I'll generate the getters and setters. Okay, and now in my draw method, I'll just print out this point here. Let's say system dot out dot print len. get y. Of course let me ah, parenthesis around this. And that's it. So I'm just printing out the the center point for this circle. And in my triangle draw method I will Right. Call 
we're just drawing a triangle. And that's it, straightforward enough. I have a triangle, which is dependent on three points and it has a draw method. And I have a circle, which is it has just one point and it has a draw method. And both of them have a draw method because they implement a shape interface, which has defined this draw method. Okay. Now what I need to do is for every object that I define here, I need to write the bean definition in the spring XML. So let me just copy this. And I'll define the circle as well. Call this circle. And then it has only one point property. And that's the center. Okay, so so far we are, uh, this is all fine. We have two classes over here two shape classes, one is a triangle and one is a circle, both of them implementing shape. And I have defined the dependencies for both of them over here. Now, if I um, if I need to draw a triangle, so this is the code that I have to write, and then when I run it, I get a triangle. And now if I need to draw a circle, I would write circle, And then, of course, I will have to cast this to a circle and then get the circle object itself, and then I do a circle dot draw. Okay, now if I run this, I'll be drawing the circle. Now, if we have to code by interface, what I would do is instead of you know, instead of having a circle or a triangle here. What I do is I'd have a shape instead. So I am coding to the interface, not to the specific implementation. And then here I do a shape dot draw. Okay, now the advantage is obvious. Now if I am doing a get bean of circle, it draws a circle. If I'm doing a get bean of triangle, it draws a triangle. So the advantage here is that the drawing application does not know whether it's drawing a circle or a triangle or any other shape. All it knows is that it is getting a bean which implements the shape interface and then it's calling a method of the shape interface. So the other advantage is later, tomorrow if you have, you need to add a new class. So you need to add a rectangle class. As long as it implements the shape interface, you just drop the class in there and then you add these uh, the configurations. So you, you call this as say shape for example, and then the shape has been defined as a circle in this instance you can later modify it and add new implementations of the shape interface. And then all you need to do is you need to change just the class over here. Let's say I have this as shape. All you need to do is modify just this bean definition. You add the right class and then you satisfy the properties. And then the drawing application is gonna draw different shapes, which were not even there when this application was first coded. And uh, all that's happening because you're just concerned with the methods of the interface itself and not the methods of the individual objects that implement that interface. So this is the main advantage of coding by interfaces. And what this translates to is in your application, uh, normally you would have say business services or DAO layers. What you would do is instead of having a, say a view layer directly call a business service object, what you would do is you would have an interface for the business service and then you would call the methods of that interface and then the implementation would be later plugged in 
with the specific business service implementation that you've coded. And then if you want to change it later, you don't have to change the view layer, for example. You have to just add the new business service implementation and then rewire it in your uh, Spring XML, and then you're good to go. So this is, uh, this is a very good uh, practice to implement. You know, whenever you're uh, doing dependency injection, always use interfaces so that if you change the implementation, you don't have to change the actual class which depends on which depends on this interface. You just plug in the new implementation and then you know change the wiring so that the class can use the new implementation.